All right, today's problem is minimum path sum. In this problem, they give us a grid with non-negative numbers, so zero and positive, um, and they want us to find a path from the top left of this grid to the bottom right, and we're only allowed to move right or move down. And the path that they want us to find is one where if we add up the values along the way, um, that value is the minimum, so the sum is the minimum. Okay, so let's take a look at this example, and we see here that the greedy algorithm doesn't work. So if we start here from one, and we know that this is the solution that they give us, if we try to just take the minimum path each time, so here if we have to decide between three and one, if we choose to go down this route of one, we're gonna be stuck here with this giant five and this giant four, and we're never going to find the minimum path. So the greedy algorithm doesn't work in this case. Instead, we have to ask ourselves a different question. How do we find the minimum path to get to here, where this is the value of seven? Well, there's only two ways to reach this node. You either came from the top or you came from the left. So in other words, if we zoom in a little bit, here's our one, here's our one, and here's our two, the minimum path sum of this will be one plus the minimum path sum of either the the node above you or the node to your left. So for example, if this had a minimum path sum of six, and this had a minimum path sum of eight, then we could just take the minimum of these two. So we'd take six to get us seven, and that would be our solution. So to solve this problem, um, there's two ways of going about it. The first way I'll show you is the recursive way. So how do we figure out the minimum path sum of this? we asked it to solve the same question, but for the one above and for the one to the left. So let's try coding that out. Okay, so we're gonna have some sort of a recursive function where we take, uh, where we take in a uh, minimum path sum, and we'll also take in a grid, but we'll take in what row and what column we want to find this out for. So for example here, uh, what we want to do is return the minimum path sum for our grid for the last row in the last column. So for example, if we have grid.length rows and our columns will have grid0.length, and then here we'll add a check to make sure that we do have uh, a grid. So if we don't have a grid, then just return zero. And here we can return rows and columns for the last one. So minus one and minus one. So that gives us the bottom right corner. Okay, so in this minimum path sum, what we wanna ask now is we wanna get the top and we wanna get the left. So basically what we wanna return is, um, so where we are right now, plus the minimum of either the minimum path sum at uh, the top, so the one above us. Grid, let me space this out. Or we get the minimum path sum of the one right next to us. So the same row, but the one preceding us. Okay, so there's a couple of edge cases here. For example, uh, if row is less than zero or column is less than zero, then we are off the grid. So if in that case, we are trying to get the minimum paths for something here or something here. So something outside of the boundaries of our box. So in order for us not to pick this path, what we will do is we'll, re we'll return these to be infinity. That way, when, for example, let's say we're solving this one, when we're deciding a path between this and this, we'll always pick the path from the left because the path from the top returns infinity. So the minimum will always be this one. Okay, so here we'll have it return, I guess, integer dot max value. Okay, and we need a base case. So our base case is gonna be when row equals zero and our column equals zero, we know that the answer of the minimum path sum will just be um, itself. 
So this is the case where we're asking, what's the minimum path of this? And we already know the answer is 1, because there is no other way to reach here except by yourself. OK, so now we have these two cases. And we can return this one. All right, let's give this a go and see how it goes. Um, let's compile. Oh, forgot a semicolon here. We'll try again. Okay, so it seems like we do get the correct answer. Now, what you'll notice here is that there's actually an optimization we can do. So the way that we've structured this is if we have this being our problem, um, so here is our problem, we ask it to solve the top problem and the left problem. So instead, we ask to solve this question, I want to know the answer to 1, 3, 1, and 1, 5, 1. And I want to know answer to 1, 3, 1, 5, 4, 2. And then because it's recursive, this will split again. And this will split again. And here, we'll get 1, 3, 1. And here, we'll get 1, 3, 1, 5. Um, for the top here, we'll get 1, 3, 1, 5. And for the left, we will get, let's see, 1, 1, 4. And here you notice that these two are actually the same. So as these diverge again, we're basically duplicating work for stuff that we've already calculated. So if we've calculated this, we don't need to calculate this again. We should be able to just stop and return a value that we've calculated. So to do that, we're going to introduce a new array. Um, we'll call this solutions. So int solutions. It's going to have the same rows and columns. It's going to have the same size. And what this will do is it will return the solution for a minimum path sum at row and column. And we'll pass it along into, into our helper function here. So solutions. And now we can add a check for if solutions at row and column is greater than 0. So we calculated it before. Then we can return um, our solution. So we can exit much faster this way. Um, and then what the other thing we can do is, let's see, we want to write down our new solution. So here our solutions at row and at column is going to be equal to this instead. So we'll do that. And then finally, we will return solutions at row and column instead. OK, so that should help save us a little bit of time. So we'll try running this code. And oh, right. So here, we ought to remember to keep passing it on. And that should be it. Let's try submitting. OK, so this is accepted. And I'll show you a different way to approach the same problem. OK, so in this problem, you can see that you know we have 100% in terms of runtime. But we are using uh, n, m times n amount of space. We had to create a new solutions grid. So what if the question asked us to do this in constant space? So let's give it another go. What we want to do instead is to build up our solution from the very beginning. So remember that at each point to solve, to solve this, we needed to know what the answer is for this node and the answer for this node. And instead of doing it recursively backwards, we can start by asking ourselves, what answer do we already know? And the answer that we already know is for the origin. The origin we know is here and here. We know the solution for this already. It's just going to be 1. And now we know how to solve 3. Because to solve 3, we just need to know the top, which is going to be infinity. And we now know the left, 
from 1. So the left from 1 is going to tell us this has a value of 1, and we're going to update so that our minimum path sum at this point is now 4. So now we have this solution, and we can continue to solve more. So here our solution will become 5, and here, because we have the left side and the top, now this is going to, this is going to be 2. And now we have uh, orange here, green there. And now we can solve 5 because we have the two values from the left and from the top. So we have 4 and 2. We will take 2. So 2 plus 5, this will give us 7. So continuing like this, we can solve the rest of this. So we're going to take 5 verse 7 here, we're going to take 5, so this will become 6. Um, this is going to become 6 from this 2, and then 6, we're going to take this one, this will become 8, and now we have 6 and 8, finally we take 7 to be here. So in this version, we can just overwrite the grid as we're going along from the top left. So let's see what this looks like in code. So we'll get rid of all of this. Or I suppose these are fine. Okay, so we start from here. And now we want to figure out the first row. So we know that grid, we know that for int i, or I guess for int column equals one, call less than call, call, call plus. This will handle the first row. So in our first row, we have a special case here where the top is all infinity. So we know we always take the right path. So that means grid at this row and this column is just going to be the grid at the same row at the column beforehand. So this is going to be the zeroth row. It's going to be the zeroth row. So this part handles um, this overwriting of 1, 3, turning into 4, and this turning into 5. OK, now we can handle the rest of the grid. So for the rest of the grid, We have something like this. Oh, but remember, actually, there's one more edge case. So this solved the edge case of being the first row, but now we have to solve the edge case of being the first column. So the first column has this bounding on the left side. So we always take the path going down. So what we'll have is for the grid at our new row. So actually here we start from row one because this is row zero calculations, and this is the rest of the grid. So we'll start from row one, and our grid at this row, at the zeroth column, is always going to be row minus one at the same column. So we always take the, the path from the top, so the previous row's value. There's nothing to take from the left side. Okay, so we have that, and now we can check the rest of the columns. So we'll do that with another for loop. Colon plus colon, colon plus plus. And here as well, what we'll have is grid at row at this column. Um, so actually this is from one because we've solved column zero here. It's going to be plus equals the minimum. And just like before, we're going to do the top and the left. So here we have the top and here we have the left. So it's either going to be the minimum of grid at row minus 1 at the same column, or it's going to be at the grid at the same row, but at the previous column. Okay, so now we should be able to just return grid at the last row and at the last column, and this will give us an identical answer. And this way, we started out from the beginning, and we didn't have to use any extra space at all. Okay, looks like it's still correct. Um, press submit. And let's go over the runtime a little bit. So you can see here, while we're building this up, we really just look at every single cell. So that means in total, our runtime is gonna be as big as rows times columns, or in the case of how the question describes it, m times n. Okay, that's the end of today, and I'll see you on the next one.